Okay guys, welcome to What's in the Night Sky for December 2019. This month I'll be announcing the three winners of the 2020 Night Sky calendar giveaway and I also have a new exciting giveaway for this month's challenge so stay tuned for that. But a quick summary of this month, we have the Geminids Meteor Shower, an annular solar eclipse, we got plenty of Milky Way action of course, the winter circle dominates the night sky and we also have Venus the Christmas star. But before we deep dive into all of that, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 29,000 classes in design, business and all things photography and videography. If you're looking to brush up on your landscape astrophotography, then you should check out this course by Ian Norman, the guy behind LonelySpec.com. He covers all the basics you need to know to capture and edit amazing nightscape images that include things like the Milky Way. There's also another course run by Adventure photographer and Instagram legend Chris Burkhardt. He teaches you outdoor photography from sunset to sunrise and even capturing wonderful images in the nighttime that exists between. Skillshare is super affordable. An annual subscription costs just £7 a month and that gives you access to all of the courses and you can try as many as you like. But if you use the link in the video description below, you can get two months free of Skillshare Premium. So you can try out as many classes as you like. So follow that link in the description below and you can get two months free of Skillshare Premium. Okay guys, if you're new here, you need to know that the information in these videos is mainly for wide angle astrophotographers with a little bit of information for those using portable star trackers and perhaps binoculars and basic telescopes as well. Now for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, we are heading deep into winter and on the 22nd, we have the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year. So at the end of the month, the nights will begin to shorten and the days will get longer. Of course, don't forget that for those in the Northern Hemisphere, it is Aurora Borealis season and there's often great displays around the solstices too. So keep an eye out on space weather reports as we might be in for a nice show this month. So the night sky is now dominated by the winter constellations with everyone's favorite Orion rising in the east shortly after darkness falls. Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, will be rising in the southeast about 9.30 p.m. And it's quite a spectacle to watch, as when it's low on the horizon, its light is passing through a thick layer of Earth's atmosphere, and wind and air currents cause it to twinkle heavily. Now, all stars twinkle, but Sirius really is something else. It's like a little disco ball in the sky, except it's like eight light years away. Once Sirius is above the horizon, we have the entire winter circle in the night sky. This is Procyon from the constellation Canis Minor, Castor and Pollux, the heads of the twins Gemini, Capella, the bright star from the constellation Auriga, and then you have Aldebaran from Taurus with Pleiades just above. Below that you have Rigel, one of Orion's feet, and then last to rise is Sirius of Canis Major, the brightest star in the night sky. These bright stars from various constellations all together make the asterism the winter circle, and it's a fantastic area of the night sky. There are just so many bright, colourful stars stars in that region of the night sky and it's a joy to photograph. It does cover a large area of the night sky as well so you will probably have to take a panorama if you want to include the entire winter circle. As for the Milky Way, you still have the Great Rift extending from the western horizon as darkness falls. That begins to set and then by midnight the Cygnus region of the Milky Way is hugging the northwestern horizon and above that is the Cassiopeia region of the Milky Way which is now lower in the sky and just to the left of the Cassiopeia region will be Andromeda, the spiral galaxy M31. And Andromeda shows up quite well even in wide angle shots so it's a nice chance to get two galaxies in an image. You'll have the Milky Way and of course Andromeda just to the left of it. If you're hoping to pull out your star trackers this month, then you have things like the open star cluster Pleiades, which would be a really good first target for the night. And then as time goes on, Orion will also cross the southern meridian at about midnight. So then you have the Orion Nebula, you also have the Flame and Horsehead Nebula as well. It's a really good region of the night sky to get the tracker out and try something with a bit of a longer focal length. For those of you in the southern hemisphere, Andromeda can be found in the north as darkness falls, but that approaches the horizon and sets at about midnight. The large and small Magellanic clouds also spend a lot of the night in very high positions, which can be good for tracking. And by midnight, the winter circle in its entirety can be found in the northeast. But as it's seen upside down compared to what those in the northern hemisphere see, it's not not Sirius that's the last to rise, but actually Gemini, so explain that one, Flat Earthers. Also at around midnight, there's a really good opportunity for a Milky Way arch panorama, stretching from north to south across the eastern skies. 
you'll see Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, sitting at the apex of the arch. And on the right, you'll also find the Carina Nebula and the Running Chicken Nebula, perhaps one of the best-named nebulae out there. But really good regions of hydrogen alpha, which will look great if your camera has been astro-modified. As for the planets this month, Venus steals the show, and it's this year's Christmas star, except, of course, it's not a star, it's a planet, and it's not in the east, it'll be in the west, blazing at a bright magnitude of minus four in the evening skies. At the start of the month, you'll find Jupiter to its lower right, shining at minus 1.8, but that sinks into the twilight and disappears by the middle of the month. As the month goes by, Venus reaches higher into the sky and actually passes underneath Saturn between the 10th and the 11th, so a good opportunity for a conjunction photograph there. Saturn, like Jupiter, is also dipping towards the horizon and it too will disappear by the end of the month. In the morning skies in the east, we have Mars rising at about 5am, shining at a modest plus 1.6. At the start of the month, Mercury rises at about 6am, outshining Mars at a magnitude of minus 0.6, but it it too is dropping towards the horizon and will disappear from sight by about mid-December. So we're saying farewell to a few of the planets this month, but of course, they'll be back soon. As for close approaches this month, on the morning of the 23rd, you'll find the Moon and Mars in the morning skies, and then on the 28th and the 29th, there's a good pairing of the Moon and a brilliantly bright Venus, so a really good opportunity for a photograph there. Now there's a couple of special events this month, the first being the Gemini's Meteor Shower, which peaks on the night of the 13th and the 14th. It's one of the most reliable meteor showers of the year, with a zenithal hourly rate of 120 meteors per hour. However, this year, the moon will only be a few days past full, and so a lot of the smaller meteors will be washed out by the bright moonlight. Fortunately though, Geminids are often large and bright and rich in fireballs, so all is not lost, and you may still see up to 20 or even 30 meteors an hour especially around 2am local time when the radiant point of the meteor shower within the constellation Gemini will be directly overhead. Also, don't forget to check out my vlog from last year's Geminids in La Palma. I'll put a link above and in the video description below. Secondly, for those of you in Saudi Arabia, Southern India and parts of Indonesia, there's an annular solar eclipse. Now, an annular solar eclipse is where the moon covers the center of the sun. However, its apparent diameter is smaller than the sun, so it doesn't completely cover it and you're left with a ring or an annulus of the sun around the moon. Those in Eastern Europe, parts of Asia and Northwest Australia will also be able to see a partial eclipse weather permitting, but I'll put a link to the timeanddate.com webpage for the event below as there's an interactive map that allows you to plot your shooting location and you can get some really personalized info on the event for your location, things like start time and end time, as well as the position of the sun and the moon when the eclipse occurs. Just a really great resource for your local area. And that is about all I've got for you this month, guys. Now onto the hashtag with for those of you that are new here, every month I set a subject and people send in their photographs using the hashtag Wittens and I pick my favourite three to feature in next month's video and on my Instagram account as well. This month, each of the top three will also be receiving a copy of my 2020 What's in the Night Sky calendar, which has dates of significant astro events already written in. And there's also an exciting giveaway for this month too, so stay tuned for that. Last month, I asked you guys to tag your images of star trails. Now in third place is the this gorgeously colourful image from Joel Stafford photo. Really nice foreground interest there of the wild horse lookout. And I love the concept that people who will be in the lookout will probably spend a lot of time there. So star trails are a really good way to portray the passage of time. So I love that link between the sort of foreground and the sky and just these gorgeous colours. Really love this image. In second place was this really clean image from Matej Lele. I hope I'm saying your name right dude. But I love this snow capped mountain and these really cool blue tones to the image. A very monochromatic image. It's very soothing. And the star trails are just really nice and clean and I do love star trails at a bit of a longer focal length as well. It's always so easy to slap on a wide angle and face north to get the big circles, but I do enjoy these more telephoto style star trails as well. And my favourite image this month came from Mark McNeil of this abandoned ship rusting away under the stars. Some really nice clean star trails. 
And again, I just love the concept of Star Trails depicting the passage of time. And obviously this ship has been laying there, rusting away for quite some time. And as an image, I just love the balance between the blue and the rusty red. They really complement each other very well. And it's just a lovely scene. So well done, Mark. I'll be getting in touch with all the winners so I can send you all your calendars. Now this month, I have some exciting giveaways for you guys. There'll be three different prizes one of them being the new Benro L-Plate. Benro have just made a brand new Universal L-Plate, so I'll be giving away one of those. I also have a $50 voucher for the Loom Cube store. And then third place, we'll be getting a 2020 Night Sky calendar and a 12 by 8 print of their choice of any one of my images. So seeing as we're coming to the end of the year, guys, I want you to re-upload your favorite shot of 2019. This this time I want you to use the hashtag Wittens2019 and you also need to tag me in your post with at Alan Wallace and mention that this is your favorite astro image of 2019. Really looking forward to seeing what you guys post and if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon I wish you good luck and clear skies.